Well, hi everybody, uh, my name is Steve Worswick and I'm uh, the uh, creator, the developer, the author, the general dog's body, the uh, Mitsuko chatbot. Um, I'd like to thank Tom for inviting me here today to uh, explain a bit more about it. Um, just before I start though, um, when I was looking for directions for the place, I was looking at Google Street View, and um, there's actually a guy stood outside with a Terminator t-shirt, <laughs> which I thought was quite uh, appropriate for a uh, and the first time you want to watch this course. Okay, so a bit about me. Um, originally, I was uh, a dance music uh, techno music um, producer, um, just as a hobby. And it's a kind of boom, boom, boom rubbish that you hear kids blasting out of the cars. Um, so I'm to blame for some of that, unfortunately. Um, had a few minor hits up and down the country, and um, I was put on the, one of these CDs I was featured on, Scottish Clubland 3, which I'm, I'm sure is in all your collections. Uh, if not, why not? And um, one of the, my fellow producers had a um, chatbot on his website. And I've always been interested in this sort of thing, you know, from growing up on a diet, like Night Rider and Star Trek and all that class kind of things. But when I was a lad, we didn't have computers that would do anything that was close to anything like this. Um, but I, I saw this on this website, oh, it's so cool, I, I want one on my website. Um, so I put one on, and, and I found that uh, more, after a while, more people would come into my website to talk to the chatbot than they were to listen to the music. <laughs> so I kind of took that as a bit of a hint, and I just carried on working with the, uh, the chatbot. Um, that was back in uh, about 2003, something like that, so I've been working with chatbots for about 15 years now, um, which may surprise a few people who think that like, it's last year's uh, kind of a new thing. Um, I, I can show you have been going a lot longer than that. Um, I was seen by a, a large online games company, um, mousebirthday.com. Uh, this website's uh, available. Um, it's mostly aimed at 18 to 30 year old males, so a lot of the um, games on there are kind of like football, driving, that sort of thing. Um, so th this chatbot uh, that I made for them was, it was, it was like unique. It was, it was so popular that I was getting uh, sort of 2,000 visitors a day to it rather than just like the 20 I was having to my website. And so that gave me so much more um, like logs and things that I could use to develop the body even faster. And after a while, I kept developing it, and it's just kind of evolved over the years. And it got to around 2010 and that. I was comparing the little chatbots, and I was thinking, look, this is good enough to start competing in competitions. And there was a few online competitions at the time, so I thought, well, I'll try and look. And I did quite well. And most of the time, I finished in top three. A lot of them were online competitions. Um, it's usually the case where we will ask like 20 questions and then we'll vote for like, which is given the, the best answer. Um, not necessarily the correct answer, but the one which shown the most understanding of the question and things like that. Um, and I was usually winning, um, well, placing top three anyway. Um, but the only real world competition, um, yeah, so the only uh, real world competition is the uh, Logan Prize. And um, that's the winner of that's generally you regard as having um, like the world's most um, human like conversation on AI. And I entered that in um, 2013. And as a kind of guide to um, like the quality of, of the other contestants, one unofficially entered Siri into it. And that place, 14. Um, <laughs> I was rather pleased with that. And uh, yeah, 2014, 2015, I came second. Um, so, and then 2016, 2017, I've won it for like the last two years. So I've got a uh, nice shiny medal, and I've got three of these, so I can wear them on the neck like this. Well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's been the last two years winning. And that naturally brought a lot of uh, attention from the press and media, um, being featured on like BBC, Sky News, Venture Beat, um, Microsoft used it as their flagship box on Skype at one time. Um, it was getting around a million interactions a day. Um, I couldn't keep all the, you know, kind of like that scene from Silicon Valley where they got the fire extinguished on the server type thing. But that was crazy. So, yeah, it was crazy, like science festivals and French telly and all sorts of things. So, a mix of books out. There's been um, four different versions of it. Um, Originally it's the, an anime version, because it's kind of got like a Japanese name, um, I think it's like a, an anime one, and because it's aimed at 
that 18 to 30 year old males, we had the ones who was kind of a little bit suggested, kind of like that, you know, different top family. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to do what they wanted to do. But, um, I then found a, um, a 3D animation program called Hatta, people put it, and you could make kind of like these 3D movie avatar type things, um, but, the, but they were generally quite a bit creepy. Um, that one, it kind of like falls deep into the uncanny valley. So I moved on from that and commissioned a, uh, a Dutch artist to create my uh, current avatar, um, which was a bit more modest, but it's still old, and that's what I'm currently using at the moment. What I am moving towards is I'm working with an animation company called Expressive.ai, and it's to create like, again, it's a, a moving 3D talking avatar, but this time it's a bit more cartoon, it, 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 it looks a bit more realistic, kind of like something like, say, out of a Pixar film. And um, it's available at the moment on the uh, website, Facebook Messenger, Kit, Telegram, Skype, Twitch. And that's thanks to all my uh, tech team at PandoraBots.com. So, uh, I, I do all the AI, they do the tech, and they like the business side of it. So, <coughs> so at the moment, so I'm Android app, and there's a little sort of demo of it there. Um, it's just a beta release at the moment, but it's available in the Google Play Store if uh, anyone wants to try it. We can have a thousand uh, downloads of it. So, right, I'm going to be trying to be brave. And uh, I don't know if it's Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but the um, voice has a Yorkshire accent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
from that Silicon Valley the bit. <laughs> so I think that'll do for the demo. Uh, there's the website at the top, if anyone wants to try it, please feel free. Um, you can talk about any mobile, um, there's lots of Twitter and things like that as well. <coughs> okay, so how does it work? Um, without going into too many technical details, uh, so it does a pattern matching AI ML bot. AI ML, artificial intelligence markup language, that's just the language I've chosen, so uh, I might make some point. Pattern matching simply means that for the user input, it searches down its database to try and find the best match. Um, uh, each item of knowledge in AIML is known as a category. Um, if you're used to building lots of different ways, you'd probably know these as intents. Um, so the pattern is saying what the user is saying to the bot, the template simply says how the bot should react. That's a very simple one. It's just saying if the, bot, if the person says hello, reply with hi there, how are you? But you can do all kinds of like processing, conditional statements, and all kinds of different things inside there. Uh, normally, say about 10,000 categories. The topic specific part, that John just knows about pizza or Shakespeare or something like that. Um, it still currently has 300,000 categories um, because it asks questions about anything and everything, so it asks all kinds of weird rubbish. Um, and daily review of what people are saying to it by myself, that's around 10 to 50 new categories uh, per day, um, depending on the time I have to develop it. Um, Originally, when I started working on it, I was having about 300 categories a day. Um, but as it's progressed over the years, it's got better and better. And I'm finding, oh, I'm checking the same amount of logs. I'm not having to correct as many, many things in the air. So it can ask all things like common sense questions, the kind of things that uh, like a school child would know. Um, but it's, it's incredibly difficult to box without hard coding all the answers. Uh, so there's some simple questions there about uh, animals. Um, now, I could, I could have got all the answers, but there's, all, there's almost an infinite number of ways people can ask things, and I just don't have time to do that. So what I don't give it is a, you know, a database. <coughs> so, for example, what a spa legs and says what you can look down the database say, like spa, there's a dog, a giraffe and a cow. Okay, so it says wolf, so it matches it up, wolf, and the answer is a dog, and it works out right. So people obviously are skipped a lot more than just animals. So I currently have a um, anthology of around 3,000 common objects. Um, so look at the camera was one of them. And it's got all kinds of different things like what syllable it has, what does it do, what use is it, and all kinds of uh, all kinds of weird things that can use to work out pretty much anything that people want to ask about. Uh, so there's a few examples of things that I found from the chat logs. And, um, I think these are what people, people say to it. Because it's got these um, database of um, objects in there, it can work out, uh, it can infer things and work out from um, its knowledge uh, about objects it doesn't know. Um, someone said to it once, which is bigger, a shoebox or Taj Mahal? Now, excuse the grammar on the, the answer, it's unedited. Um, but it knows a shoebox is fairly small, it doesn't know any attributes about the Taj Mahal. It knows what it is, but it doesn't know what colour it is, how big it is. So it says, it's not heard of the Taj Mahal, but it knows the show that it's very small, so chances are the Taj Mahal is bigger. Which doesn't always work, but it kind of uses like a probability type uh, thing to work that out. So some um, problems, similar to the Margot chatbot, language problems, uh, ambiguity, different ways of things, saying the same things, um, figures of speech. Um, it's the same for humans, so I mean, there was a newspaper with a headline about Donald Trump's um, research uh, physical, and uh, the doctor said that no heart, cognitive issues, which could be taken either way. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's the same for the body, you need to know what it's trying to understand. Uh, and again, pronoun sort of resolution. Um, the cat couldn't find in the box because it was too big. So, it refers to the cat, the cat was too big to climb in the box. Change that to small, the cat couldn't climb in the box because it was too small, and it refers to the box. Uh, so, it's, it's, it's difficult, and a lot of it you just have to take on like a case by case basis. Uh, context in conversation is difficult. Um, <coughs> if you what is it, or why, or things like that, we need to know what is it referring to. What, 
stood an example where where someone said, what's yours? But McSilco needs to know what what yours means, what is it that the just is trying to find out. And uh, people also speak to these things, and uh, they expect to be talking to things like C3PO, um, the technology is just not there to create like this all knowing um, cyborg type things. And I find that they get a bit frustrated if the um, if the box answering the uh, incorrectly. Uh, also people at the front affairs, people are always asking about celebrity gossip, by bands and all that kind of thing. Um, what's happening in Coronation Street and all that. Um, a lot of memes, um, but for a long time, a few years ago, I was having lots of people asking it, um, what does the fox say? Which didn't mean anything to me, but dozens and dozens of people were asking it, and I looked it up and it had it for some time from it says, the ring, the ding, and all that. <laughs> But yeah, the new thing I've got people that um, updating it by checking the logs. Uh, there's a few examples up there, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I can only think of so many things that I think people are going to ask about, and then I put it online, and I need to check them. I usually check them in the uh, newest order first, so any of my latest updates, and um, I can see if they're actually working. So just a quick one about where the, where the users are from. Uh, pick up the users. Uh, so yeah, where we're from, pretty much everywhere really. Um, as you'd expect, most of the time like North America and Europe. But I also get like Amazon rainforest and Sahara and bits of rock in the Pacific that you probably don't think have electricity. <laughs> um, the only ones I'm unaware of is uh, North Korea and South Pole. But I do get a few from them. Um, Anonymous proxy, so I don't think that's <laughs> And uh, I did have one from the Vatican City as well, so <laughs> only one. So the sorts of people that talk to it and kind of group them into like three groups. Um, about a third of them are abusive, they'll treat you like a uh, master slave type relationship, uh, lots of sex talk, swearing, things like that. Um, I did have a, uh, like a five strikes and you're out type warning system. Um, but I found that I was getting uh, emails from people who enjoyed being mean to the bot and <laughs> uh, they asked me to remove it so they could be mean to it, so I did do so. I don't want it to become a, an adult bot because a lot of schools and universities talk to it as well. So it tries to sort of like defend it to try and sway it away and give a sarcastic comment and things like that. So it's, it's quite good fun to answer. So, yeah, it's quite good. Um, think of something like this, but rather, it's just makes it a lot of Most of the people, though, they're, they're fine. Uh, they talk to it like it's a real person. Um, they know it doesn't have a favourite colour, it's not going on holiday this year, but they, they go along with the illusion of the thought and they enjoy talking for what it is. And that's the main people that I kind of aim to design the bot from. Uh, the third group is kind of like the people who seem to enjoy uh, tripping them up and trying to fool it. Um, Twenty percent or so. Um, the last crazy things like you know, can you eat a cinema or this space things out so crazily long, and um, it's hard for the bot to understand. But I mean, if it's designed as a conversational program, now if, if I was to go up to a, one of you at a party and the first thing I said was how many syllables are in the word banana, <laughs> then I'd <laughs> probably have a conversational part for very long. <laughs> so, that's what people are. And uh, yeah, get regular users, people who have tweets, um, same people who have day after day, uh, people have been talking to it for years, and um, people speak to it like a friend, they ask it for advice, and um, some people have to speak to it more than humans really, um, the door of the bot's not going to judge them, it's uh, not going to sort of like tell anyone uh, if they've got problems at home or at work, they feel comfortable selling uh, the robots for some reason. Uh, a lot of people like romance with it, but for whatever reason, so it's, um, she gets like, perhaps from people saying that they love her and marriage proposals and uh, things like that, um, which is a bit creepy really because most of these responses have been written by me. But yeah, then there's an example of, I like you more than my human female friends. That's not uncommon to see in the logs. Um, it's, a, it's a little scary to be honest with you. So, um, but again, yeah, schools and universities use it as well for educational purposes. Um, I always like to see people using education, um, and it's great when people are doing projects and things like that from it. 
Um, I also find that um, like a lot of people who are maybe like social disorders or don't like talking to other people, they, they enjoy speaking to it as well. Um, I find it sort of rehabilitates them into doing things like that. English is a second language. Um, it's always online, it's always the head not going to make fun of anybody. And uh, then finally, the internet cranks. And uh, these are people who sort of genuinely believe it's a lie, or I'm creating Skynet, or um, I get emails saying, I'm, I'm creating artificial life, it's against God's will, and all this kind of thing. Even they believe it was like a, the spirit of his dead father was channeling through this box because it enjoys Leeds United and bacon sandwiches. So we get that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, just briefly, um, the future. I've got to work on it full time, it is just something I do in my spare time at the moment. Um, but at the moment, I have a job in IT support, so I'm working from like 7 o'clock till 5 o'clock, a bit of time with the family and then working through to listening to about 1 o'clock in the morning and um, it's taken its toll now. Um, I need to get to the spot where I'm working on it full time. I just get up so much faster and um, it's something I love doing and I love to do full time. It's like to keep on top of the game at the moment. It is virtually winning the Lona Prize the last two years. Um, it's the fastest of the world's most children like AI. And so I'd like to sort of keep that title. Um, and then they go, I'm not sure what's happening below the prize this year, because um, people don't know if actually died, so I'm not sure if that's uh, what's going to happen this year. But of course, naturally, I'd like it to be bought by someone like Microsoft or Google for $18 million, but um, I'll come for <laughs> Okay, so I think that's probably all I'm going to have time for that. That's a look through it a little bit there. Um, so, yeah, there's an email on there, and a website if you want to talk to it. Um, I'm mostly on Twitter. Um, if anyone wants to create like a box pack for themselves, I mean, I started off a company called PandoraBox.com and it's all work for consult with them, so feel free to, uh, to join it. So I'm happy to answer any questions if we've got time, or I'm happy to feel any questions to mix up as well if you want. Okay. Okay, we've got time for like two questions. Right. Any questions? We've got time for two. One over uh, Steve, have you thought about licensing uh, in two? Yeah, yeah. Um, hello? Yes, um, yeah, uh, from what I've thought about it, uh, it's issued by um, a few companies. Um, unfortunately, I can't really go into too many details. Um, but what would happen, uh, there'd be a bot that sort of like has a specialist subject, that's, let's say for example a pizza ordering bot. Um, <coughs> a lot of the time, although these bots are designed to order pizzas, people will still be wanting to talk to it and will say, you're going on holiday this year. Mm. At that point, it drops down to my uh, Mitsuko, which gives a, a sensible reply to pass back up and keeps the conversation going rather than just the pizza bot saying, I don't know. <coughs> so it is an API available for um, People to license, yeah. Um, let's discuss that later. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thanks. Anyone? Uh, okay, by that, I, I know I want to ask, um, we do pattern matching rather than standard kind of natural language, not standard, but like what kind of, I guess, most of us would do like natural language uh, processing. Can you talk about what, why you do that rather than natural language, like machine learning stuff? Yeah, the, the simple reason being that I, um, because I'm expected to deal with anything and everything that people can go to it, um, I have yet to see a, a natural language bot that can do that, um, a natural language processing bot that can do that. People might say to it something like, John eats pizza. You need to as well as breaking it down into verbs and nouns, you need to give a sensible response back to the Johnny's pizza. What do you do with it once you've broken it down into nouns? For, for me, it will understand that sentence, it will create a load of old categories of intent, it will say who eats pizza, what does it he eats, and things like that. But it will also give back a reply saying, oh yeah, that sounds yummy. Um, but I, I've yet to see any kind of NLP bot that can do anything like that. Thank you. Thank you very much.